Hey, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me and I'm coming from the veggie garden this morning sitting in front of this beautiful yellow cherry tomato and next to this coriander plant that's shot up just by accident in front of it. I say beautiful tomato but really when you look at it closely it's got a heck of a lot of dead leaves on it and it's looking quite ratty. It's towards the end of its life. See when I first started gardening about 10 years ago we moved here wanted to follow a self-sufficient type lifestyle and that was all great but one thing I, I didn't really know or didn't have an appreciation of was disease or working with disease and pests with plants. I, I freaked out the first time I saw blight on tomatoes and, and fruit fly in tomato plants and in the fruit. You know, I thought, oh, what am I going to do about this? You know, the first thing I did was get on the internet, go to the gardening centres and follow advice like, oh, you've got to use this product on, on, on your tomato plants, you've got to sprinkle it with, with uh, copper sulphate powder, you've got to use this type of pesticide to get rid of the fruit fly and then you'll have perfect plants and perfect tomatoes. Well I soon realised you know that that all that manic freaking out and garbage about trying to keep your plants perfect is really unnecessary. So I'll take you around and at the same time I'm going to explain to you how I grow my tomato plants and why they look the way they are at the moment and why I don't care that my tomato plants don't look as beautiful as manicured roses in the botanical gardens. Now let's have a closer look at this yellow cherry tomato here. You can hardly see the leaves for the fruit, but like I said, it's coming towards the end of its life. And look at the blight, look at the, you know, tomato plants, they, uh, this is natural. They produce and then they die. This is their natural way of doing stuff. Just have a look at all that fruit. Now I haven't looked after this. Look at the size of these bloody things. Like this is as big as a golf ball. Yes, it's coming towards the end of its life and I haven't done hardly anything to it. And I certainly haven't over pruned it to make it look pretty. Let's have a look at this. Fruit flies got into that one. And yeah, I could pull it off and throw it uh, and burn it and put it in a plastic bag and all that. But, you know, the fruit fly life cycle is about six weeks or so. And uh, at the end of the day, it's, it's not, you know, you can't get wrapped around the axles about trying to find every piece of fruit that's gone rotten and every grub so that it doesn't reinfect your whole property. Don't worry about it so much. Okay, that one's gone. This one here, it hasn't been stung. I'll pick that and we'll have that on my toasted sandwich this morning. But have a look at this plant. This is one of the large tomato varieties I grow. It's a Rouge de Marmande. Lovely tomato, I love the taste of it. Um, but you know, I tried to spell it. It didn't grow so well, but it still produced probably one or two kilos of fruit for me. I haven't gone stupid in trying to keep it all beautiful and keep in pruning these leaves off and throwing them in the compost or burning them because it had blight or, or anything like that. This is the way I've grown them for years. Here I've got some determinate tomatoes and again I, I've the maintenance I've done to them is tie them to a stake because they do need tying to a stake and I, I've just left the blight go. I haven't gone manic and trying to cut all the dead disease leaves, leaves off and just have a look have a look at all the tomato setting. It's, 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 they're everywhere. You know? These are good to be grown in pots, by the way. But they don't look pretty. But I don't have the time to worry about how pretty they look. I'm growing them for food and to make sauces and to eat in salads and I'm not growing this to look pretty. Behind all these small determinate tomatoes that I've been growing is this large 
double indeterminate cherry tomato. This one here is the standard red cherry tomatoes, which are just beautiful and sweet. Even the dog loves eating these things. You know, everyone in our family loves these tomatoes, even the dog. And on this side, there's this grape. Um, they call it a Rapunzel because of the way it just has all these bunches of beautiful flowing grape looking or Roma looking mini tomatoes. There's heaps of them. It's hard to show you a good look at them in the camera. But initially this, this did grow very, very well as tomato plants mostly do. For the first few months they grow vigorously in green and lush and then they start to fruit and they start to die off. They start to get blight and all that. Don't worry about it so much. Sure, the maintenance I've done on, on these guys, because it grew so vigorously initially, it fell all over the ground. I didn't want the tomatoes sprawling out in, onto the ground here. So I've trimmed them back. You can see where I've done some trimming here. Um, just to stop them from flopping over and, and of course I tied them to the trellising material to keep them up but apart from that I haven't gone silly and kept pruning every time I saw a diseased leaf the only other tip I'll give is for diseases here's one here that I've just started I'm gonna throw up this trellis here move your tomato plants around if you can because the more you move them around the less chance nematodes and other pests will build up in the soil and in the area if you can't move them around I would suggest rest the bed for a few months and add a whole heap of good organic material like manures and composts and that should thin out any of the pests that are starting to attach themselves to the tomatoes that are regularly grown in that area but where possible just move them around and grow them in different places uh, every every 12 months or so look the main thing I'm trying to say is don't be overly concerned with pests and diseases on your tomato plants sure if the tomato plant gets only a foot high it hasn't even got close to fruiting and it dies or it's killing over Yes, there's a concern there and you might need, might need to address that. But if your tomato plant grows as normal over a month or two, nice and vigorously, you know, all it needs is a, a little bit of a prune to keep it tidy. But apart from that, or you can train it like some people do, train it up one stem and make sure it's perfect and all that. If you've got the time to do that and that's the way you want to do it, that's good. But in, in, in terms of pests and diseases, it doesn't make a heck of a lot of difference. And if your tomato plant grows normally, it also is normal for it to succumb to disease at the end of its time anyway. Because that's when the fruit will ripen, the leaves are meant to drop off, the fruit's meant to get sun hit on it, and then it's meant to show that it's ready to be eaten so that animals and people know to pick it and then that seed can be spread around. That's the life cycle of a plant. If we try to get all silly and keep that plant alive on life support constantly with pesticides and chemicals to stop it from getting blight, all that's gonna happen is we're just gonna poison the environment and ourselves. So let your tomatoes grow naturally. Sure, give them a little bit of pruning here and there, but in the most part, don't waste your whole life and time trying to keep diseases and pests off them. Just let them grow like normal. Let them look a bit ugly. They'll produce for you and they'll be fantastic in the garden. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now. Mm.